Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Scurrious Guide. Scurrious the Rat King is a mid-level boss that has been added to the Varrock Sewers. The main purpose of the boss is to help players learn various bossing mechanics, which should help you out with more bossing down the road, but also you can get some solid XP rates here, making this a very good place to spend your time if you're at mid-level combat stats. In this guide, I'm going to go over the requirements, the gear and inventory setup you should bring with you, how to travel to the boss, then we'll go over how to actually fight Scurrious before finally getting into the loot. Scurrious can be fought in teams and in solos. This guide will be focused on soloing the boss, not that there's a huge difference between the team and solo fight. Scurrious is a members only boss, but there's no quest or anything like that you have to do to unlock it, so the requirements are very minimal. You can get started with as low as like 60 in each of your combat stats. You're not going to be using all three combat styles, so just 60 attack, strength, and defense should be a good starting point. You can use range or magic on the boss as well, so 60 range or mage would be solid, but I will be focusing more on the melee setup for this guide. You also will want to have your overhead prayer, so 43 prayer is a requirement for Scurrious as well. And for your other combat stats, you could potentially go with lower but you do have to have that 43 prayer so you can have your protect from melee, protect range, and protect magic. Let's go over the different gear that you could use to fight Scurrious, which might be the longest portion of the guy since he's pretty much weak to everything. He has a low defense level and low defense bonuses, so you can get through with just about any weapon. You'll notice that he's slightly weaker to magic than he is to melee and range, but that plus 10 difference in defense is really not making a big difference overall. Plus, using magic tends to cost more than other combat styles, so I don't suggest using magic that much. The boss drops a Scurrious Spine, which can be used to make rat bone weapons. These weapons can only be used on rats, so they're pretty much just used used for this fight. The Bone Staff is a solid weapon, probably the one mage weapon that I would send in this fight, but of course you need some KC before you can even get the Bone Weapon since it is an untradeable drop. The Bone Bow is also very solid against the Rat King if you plan on using range against the boss. You could start out with a Blowpipe, the Blowpipe does very well in here. If you're not high enough range for that, you can go with a Magic Short Bow and some Amethyst Arrows, or the best arrows that you can afford. I prefer to use melee on the boss though, so I'm going to be going over the full melee setup in a lot more depth. If you have any questions about range or magic, then let me know in the comments section below. Here's a look at a good melee setup to get started for in the rat. This is obviously not max melee, but it also isn't the bare minimum setup that you could bring. So I'm going to go over each gear slot quick and talk about the different options that you have for your gear. If you already feel like you've learned enough about the gear options, feel free to use the chapters to skip over this section. The best in slot helm for melee is Torva, followed by the Nate is not face guard, then the serpentine helm. The void melee helm is very solid, but you'll only be wearing that if you also are wearing the full void outfit fit which includes the top the bottom and the gloves after that you have the helm of nate is not then the berserker helm and then if you're rocking a dragon or a rune med helm you're not getting any offensive stats out of them but they still give you some defense bonuses the best melee cape in the game is the infernal cape it's very reasonable you may not have one if you're just trying out scurious though even the fire cape is probably a little bit further down the road than the rat king any god cloak is going to be solid for adding some prayer bonus you're going to use less prayer potions overall with a higher prayer bonus a trimmed skill cape gives a little bit more prayer than like the Cerdom and Cloak, but again, that's a little bit further down the road than just starting Scurrious. The Obsidian Cape is very good for defense, but all of the damage in the fight is avoidable, so once you get good at killing the boss, your defense bonus really isn't going to matter anymore. The best melee necklace is the Amulet of Torture. The Amulet of Strength has the same strength bonus as the Torture. The Torture gives you some other stats like prayer bonus and accuracy, but the Amulet of Strength is very good in here for being very cheap. I would bring it over the Fury and the Glory, but those are still options, no doubt. In the ammo slot, the only thing you need while using melee would be a blessing, which gives a little bit of prayer bonus. The Rada's Blessing 4 from the Elite Koren Diaries gives a plus 2, then every other blessing is a plus 1 prayer bonus. Since Scurrious has very low defense, most of the weapons are going to be solid here, so the list of weapons at Scurrious is very long. The Scythe is best in slot, but of course it's very expensive, so this is really only needed for like pet hunters who are trying to speed through KC, and apparently you could squeeze the Soul Reaper's Axe in there too. Uh, the Bone Mace is very filthy though, once you have a Bone Mace, you might as well camp that as your Scurrious weapon, but you do need the Scurrious Spine to make the Bone Mace, which is an untradeable drop from Scurrious, so clearly you can't start with the Mace. The Blade of Sailor Grazi Rapier and Inquisitor's Mace are all tied for the next best weapon, but very expensive. From there you have the Abyssal Tentacle, which is an upgraded version of the Abyssal Whip. Then you have the Dragon Scimitar, which is 60 attack, kind of what I was saying the minimum for starting Scurrious is, but you could go as low as the Brine Saber or the Rune Scimitar to get you some kills. If you're currently just getting started with your boss and grind and you want to start with Scurrious to get into any PVM, you should probably be hovering around that Dragon Scimitar to maybe Abyssal Whip area. 
Best in slot shield is your Avernic Defender, followed by the Dragon Defender. You do need a combined attack and strength level of 130 to get into the Warrior's Guild, which is how you get the Dragon Defender. You do not need 65 attack and strength to be getting started with Scurious, but this is a good goal to be setting for beginning PVMers, getting your Dragon Defender, that is. From there, you could go for an Obsidian Shield, then a Book of War, and then simply just a Rune Kite Shield. Torba Plate Body is best for your top, but it's very overpriced, and honestly, so is the Bando's Chest Plate. Bando's Chest Plate is just a fight torso with defensive stats so getting your fighter torso is just as helpful at scurious if you're wearing the void melee helm you want to wear the void knight top after that i would go obsidian top which still has some strength bonus you could also go proselyte or the initiate armor for prayer bonus if you don't have any tops that have strength bonus on it in your leg slot it's pretty much the same as the chest only there's no fighter torso for your legs torva's best in slot with bandos tasks is being next but both are very expensive if you're wearing the void helm you want to have the void knight legs the obsidian legs have a little bit of strength bonus on it which is nice and then from there you can go proselyte or initiate and maybe as low as just some rune plate legs the best gloves for melee are the ferocious gloves though they do require dragon slayer 2 to be able to make them which is much further down the road than scurious the barrows gloves require 175 quest points to get through recipe for disaster so it's also something you probably haven't gotten to if you're just getting to scurious levels but it's also a very good goal to set for your account if you're wearing that void knight helm don't forget your void knight gloves and if you haven't done any of recipe for disaster you could simply go for a combat bracelet. In the boot slot, primordial boots are the best, but they're not really worth the price, so don't be sad if you don't have primordials. Dragon boots are still very solid and not nearly as expensive. Room boots are a good option, and then climbing boots still give you a small strength bonus. Finally, for the ring slot, the Ultor and the Bellator rings are the best for melee, but they are end game prices. Even the Berserker ring is the most expensive item that I have on in this gear screenshot, but if you imbue the ring, it doubles the stats of it, which means that you get a plus eight strength bonus from the ring, which is pretty huge. The Ring of Shadows also has some nice rounded stats on it, but it does require completing Desert Treasure 2. After that, you can go for a Warrior's Ring, as long as you're using a Slash Weapon, and if you can't afford any of these expensive rings, you could always just slap on a Ring of Wealth. If you have any questions about the gear setup, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. There's a lot less decisions to make for your inventory. The main thing you need are combat potions, food, and then prayer potions. We're going to start with this special attack weapon, though, which can be helpful for some added damage. The Dragon Dagger is a great spec for being very cheap. It's going to be old reliable when it comes to your special attack weapon, since the best spec weapons are all very expensive. The Void Waker and the Dragon Claws are both potent DPS special attacks, but the Cerado and God Sword will heal your health and restore your prayer points a bit. It, which can be very solid for longer trips. The Crystal Halberd can be pretty filthy for doing damage. It does require the Western Province Hard Diaries, which are pretty tough to do compared to Scurious, but also cheaper than dropping like 100 mil on a spec weapon. I have some throwing darts in here to help clear out the rats that spawn. If you have a bone weapon from Scurious, you want to use that bone weapon to clear the rats, but before you get one of those, any quick weapon is going to help you out. You can also use a Venator bow, a Rune Throne Axe, or even the Din's Bulwark to clear out a bunch of rats at once, but you don't need those weapons to get started with Scurious. Super combat potions are a super attack, strength, and defense all in one potion, which is super convenient, though you could just bring the super attack and strength to save some GP since you don't really need defense in the long run. I do have some monkfish as my food here. You could bring really any food. Sea turtles are very efficient and high healing. Carambuans are very good since they have a reduced attack delay. Even lobsters or swordfish can get the job done fine if you're like an Iron Man without access to higher level food yet. The better that you get at the scurriest fight, the less damage you're going to take, so you'll end up bringing more prayer potions than you do food. I do have super restores instead of prayer potions since super restores give you one more prayer point per sip, but prayer potions are also going to be fine. And at the bottom of the inventory, I have some Varok teleport tabs which helps speed up the bank trip a little bit. That brings us over to our travel section of the guide. Traveling to the boss is very simple. The boss is located in the Varok sewers, very close to the entrance near the Varok castle. So you can use a Varok teleport to get near the area. You could also just use zero teleports during the grind since it's not that far of a run from the Varok east bank. When you get up to the door of Scurious, you'll notice that there's a few options. You can peek to see how many players are in the public instance, and then you can also just use a private instance, which doesn't cost anything to use. It'll just give you your own private room. 
Now let's get into actually fighting Scurrius. When the fight begins, Scurrius will be using a melee attack by slapping you with his tail, so you should camp protect from melee. You will have to switch your prayers during the fight, but overall just stick to protect melee anytime that you don't know what prayer to be using. During the whole fight, Scurrius can drop some debris from the ceiling. He'll always drop some of those rocks on the spot that you're standing. So anytime you see Scurrius jump in place, you do need to take a step over. It's pretty easy to see where the rocks are going to land because there will be a little shadow on the ground where they're gonna land. Land. When you get Scurrius to 80% health or less, or 400 or less health, he's going to walk over to one of the food piles on the side of the room and begin to heal a little bit. He will heal 5 to 10 health at a time once every few ticks. It's not a ton of healing, but if you're bringing bare minimum gear and stats, it can make the fight a lot longer. While Scurrius is eating, he won't use that tail slap anymore. He'll only be attacking with the rats on his back. They have a magic and a range attack. The mage is a blue lightning attack, while the range is a little green, apparently, piece of cheese. It looks like a little green rat fart to me. These magic and range attacks will not decide their damage until the projectile actually hits you, so you can react to them, you just have to make sure that your protect magic or protect range is on before the projectile actually hits your character. If Scurrius stops eating during this phase because he's finished up, he will take a couple steps away and use melee attacks again. He won't use any of his melee attacks while he's eating, but as he steps away from the pile, do know that he's about to send another melee attack your way. Also, while Scurrius is under 80% health, he can spawn a bunch of rats in the room. These rats have 15 health and will do pretty consistent like ones even through protect from melee. You will always max head on the rats, making them very easy to clear out. This is why it can be helpful to bring a faster weapon like some throwing darts or those weapons that hit multiple monsters at a time like the Din's Bulwark. The rats do not do a ton of damage overall, so if you're late in the fight, you can generally ignore them. And even if you don't have a great weapon to knock them out, it's pretty simple to just tag each of them and get them out of the room or even like safe spot your way around Scurrius so you're not getting attacked by too many rats at once. The bone weapons all don't have an attack delay if you're fighting those spawns with them, so that's why you can one tick your way through with like a bone mace once you finally get a Scurrius spine. Once you get Scurrius to under 30% health, he will no longer eat from the food piles, and instead, he will begin his enraged phase. Scurrius will walk to the center of the room and won't use any more melee attacks. He'll drop a lot of rocks from the ceiling, and then he'll be using the range and magic attack that you have to react to. The enraged phase feels like a lot at first, since he could be spawning in more rats as well, but Scurrius' attacks do not hit super high, so even if you are tanking all of the hits, you can usually out-eat any of the damage that the boss has managed. Scurrius will no longer heal during the enraged phase, so just drop his health to zero and the fight is over. If there's any of the other rats still in the room, they will not despawn after the fight, so you do still have to KO all of them. The piles of food in the room can also be used to heal yourself up. It will heal your health completely, but you can't use it while in combat, so you have to KO any of the spawns in the room that are still there. And there's also a 10 minute cooldown on the food pile, similar to using an altar in a God Wars dungeon room. That is really it when it comes down to the full fight. If you have any questions about how to kill the boss, let me know in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now let's talk about the loot that you can get from Scurrius the Rat King. The main purpose of the boss is to introduce low to mid-level players to bossing mechanics and then provide some solid XP rates, which they have done just that. The mechanics provide good practice for switching your overhead prayers, dealing with multiple monsters, and having to move your feet when you're targeted by debris. And the XP rates here are very solid since the rat has a lot of health very little defense, and you get a 20% bonus XP while fighting it. That being said, the loot is not that great. At the moment, the average Scurrius drop is 9.5k. The amount of kills that you can get per hour really does vary depending on your stats and gear. The boss is designed towards players without max stats and gear. Uh, the wiki recommends a minimum combat of 60, and when I did a level 60 combat kill, it took me about 6 minutes, so that would be something like 10 kills an hour. That's only 100k GP an hour, and not even pure profit there. If you're wearing max gear and stuff, you're still not going to make much more than like 500k GP an hour. And like I said though, the purpose of this boss is for practicing mechanics and getting good XP. I am going to be using this level 60 combat account that I got that early kill on to get even more kills and get a better idea of what XP rates and what kind of GP you can expect to get with a bare minimum setup, so keep your eye out for that video. The main unique drop that Scurrius has is the Scurrius Spine, which is dropped at a 1 in 33 rate. The Scurrius Spine can be combined with a Rune Mace, a U Short Bow, or a Battle Staff to make a Bone Mace, a Bone Bow, or a Bone Staff. These Bone Weapons can only be used on rats, but they are insanely convenient for the Scurrius fight, so it is a great uncommon drop to get. Lastly, there is a pet drop for Scurrius. The Scurrius pet is a 1 in 3000 drop rate, which is pretty rare. Best of luck, pet hunters. 
If you have any questions about how to fight Scurrius, be sure to comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this guide or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching and best of luck on your Scurrius grinds.